to the 23rd episode of Sweet Tea and Fred. I'm Shay. And I'm Bethany. Thank you so much to our returning viewers. And if you're new here, we are uh, primarily a knitting podcast, but we like to talk about crochet and sewing and occasionally some other fun crafty things. So if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing down below. And as always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment. We would love to hear from you. Um, tell us what you're working on. Tell us what you liked about today's episode. Anything you would love to hear from you. We would love to hear from you. And I don't know if we uh, said this before. I think we have maybe once and it bears repeating again. But we do link all of our projects down below the video. Uh, so uh, you can check that out if you're interested in any of the things that we're doing. Um, we usually start off with finished projects. That is not me today. <laughs> but Bethany has a boatload. <laughs> so, so, so we're just going to turn things over to Bethany. Some of them we'll have to put up as just pictures because I don't have them on me. But um, if you'll notice this right here, this is two finished objects that I have. Get this down. But so, you've got some pictures of you uh, wearing these things. So we can, yes. yeah, we can throw those pictures in so it can, so they can see it in all its glory. Yeah. I thought about putting this on for the podcast today, but I'm really comfortable. And so I didn't want to change. I'm in my lounging clothes. Just like. Right. Well, and that's one thing we, yes, we are podcasting from home. Things just didn't work out for us to um, get to the store. We, the last couple of times we've done it on a Sunday. Uh, unless Usually we do it on a Saturday. And that's because Bethany will work some of the Saturdays. And it just has happened that that's, you know, the week we need to podcast. But she hasn't, and we've been going in on Sundays, but that didn't work out for us this time. So here we are at home again. <laughs> but, but anyway, yeah. So, and you, like I said, you've got some pictures, and she's posted them on her Instagram. I do you try uh, to post most of my finished objects on Instagram, whether it's sewing or knitting. And one thing that I've been doing lately is that when I finish a knitting project, I'll take my Ravelry notes. And I try to include information about yarn. Um, I don't know that I've included information about needle size, but I, I'll try to make sure I can like, give everybody all the information they need about the project. But basically do a finished object post on Instagram with all of that information in the description of that post, just so that you know people who aren't using Ravelry or have had trouble recently with Ravelry and some of the readability issues they've been experiencing, we'll be able to um, see my finished object as well as notes on it, modifications I've made, size that I made, things like that. Um, so they don't necessarily have to click through to Ravelry and deal with any issue on that website that they have been dealing with. But basically, my first finished object is the Wave of Change jacket. So this is a cropped jacket. Um, it's designed by Denise Byron of Byron Handmade. And this knit up really fast. Um, I would say it's probably a good two-week project. Um, if you're an obsessive knitter like I've been lately. <laughs> but you have, yes. <laughs> it's knit with bulky yarn on um, a size nine and 10 needle, or that's the size I used. I believe that's actually what her pattern called for. So for once, I met Gage. <laughs> <laughs> You may have done like a, a 10 and 11. But um, anyway, the smaller needle size is for your ribbing. That's at the top, your button bands, which are button lift button bands, which I kind of like. And of course, you know, sleeve ribbing. 
But basically, it is a top-down raglan, open cardigan. It is knit um, seamlessly, so you aren't seeing anything. So um, you do knit and pull back and forth, and then um, these ridges are created by um, knitting two rows, like in a row, when you're flat, or curling a row when you're in the round. So there is both knitting flat and in the round, as you pick up your stitches and rows. Um, I didn't make any modifications. It's easy to lengthen if that's something that you want, if you don't want a crop jacket look. Um, I decided not to, as far as that goes. The only thing I did change, I guess I did make modifications. I didn't lengthen it, which is the typical modification. But the modification I did make was on my sleeve. Um, I didn't decrease as much. So you do wrap the decreases from the armpit out to a certain point. Um, and I didn't decrease as much. So for my pattern, the size, I think I was supposed to decrease to 30 something stitches, like 36, and I only did to 44. Just because I tend to have a larger bicep. And I also like my sleeves to be a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I knit this out of Plymouth Arieta, which is a bulky weight that's alpaca, merino, and nylon, I believe. Yeah. It's not super wash. So I do have to take, um, extra care for this sweater when I do wash it, you know, not to felt it. Um, so hand wash only, which is fine because I'm kind of used to being a little fussy with my knit. Even the knit I do with super wash yarn, I tend to be fussy with them. But the great thing about this yarn that I like is it's a bulky weight, but it's so lightweight at the same time. Because what they do for this particular yarn is they have a nylon tube that they blow the fur into. And um, it just creates this very quality, which it's called Ariado for good reasons. Um, so this is a bulky weight sweater, but as you can see, it's very lightweight and drapey. It, it feels, I've seen it in person and felt it. And I mean, it's like light as a feather. It's just not very heavy at all. It feels really good. It's really soft and just, it's warm, like I've worn it a little bit around the house, which because I mean, we are in the middle of August, um, and we have, I feel like, 100 degree weather. Um, but I've worn it a little bit around the house, and it, it's just like wearing a warm hug. <laughs> and that's always a good thing. Um, that yarn is 70% baby alpaca, 7% merino wool, and 23% nylon. Um, and like you said, it's, it's uh, not a super wash. It's a hand wash and lay flat to dry. But the yardage on this bulky yarn is really good. It's 283 yards in a skein. So that's more than you usually find <clears throat> in a, a bulky weight yarn. I only needed three skeins for this sweater. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. I do have a little bit left over. Um, I don't have a lot. So say I was gonna add length to the body of the sweater, I'd probably need an extra skein. But I mean, it's it's, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's made me interested in making one. I'm thinking that plum that I was rooting for for you since you didn't use it. I'm thinking that could be my wave of change. Yeah. Um. So first finished object. Second finished object, I'll quickly talk about. We'll insert pictures, but um, I finally completed my Moret pants um, out of the black linen that I was doing. And the reason it took me so long on those pants to finish it was because 
I had inserted the waistband upside down. How? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that turned out to be kind of a conundrum, didn't it? I mean, it's the kind of thing that when I inserted it in and then I tried them on and everything, I could tell it was upside down because it was gaping. Um, and it wasn't supposed to, like it, it, it was coming out in the front. Um, so I kind of put them aside for the longest and I kept saying, I'll see my, I'll get to it. I'll, you know, whatever. I never did until finally I just, I just had to get them done. It's the kind of thing that it sits there for so long and you get so frustrated because you're so close. Literally it was the waistband and hemming the pants. And I was finished. Um, but yeah, finally finished those. And the reason I finished those was because I made a wilder top, which you can also see in the photo. Um, and that top uh, comes from the wilder gown pattern by Friday Pattern Company. It's a new pattern that we're carrying in the store. And I knew that I didn't really want to make the full length gown and I was kind of concerned about the neckline so I decided to make a top. We um, looked at the measurements at the store to figure out what size I would need to make and one thing I will say about their patterns that I have noticed so far is that um, if you look at the finished garment measurements it looks like it's going to be really big and really oversized. I ended up having to do a full bust adjustment, which was fine. I made two muslins of the pattern before I bought my fabric um, to make sure I was doing the correct size and to see if I needed to do an adjustment. And then when I actually went to make it, I did the adjustment and added some length to it because I was going to tuck it in to a lot of like high-waisted things. And it was perfect. Um, but I also made a sample for the shop, which we can also insert a photo of. Um, I made a size small for the sagebrush top, which is also a Friday pattern company pattern. And so it was a size small, and we made it so that Caitlin could model it for us. And when she tried it on, it fit her perfectly as is. And she measured it in as what would have been an extra small. So the decision that we made in order to arrive at the small for our sample size was basically so that we could put it on our mannequins, which typically we'll make a size small for in the store. And then she tried it on and it fit her perfectly. That's when we realized that these patterns really tend to run a little bit small. Um, it does give you instructions, at least in the wilder gown pattern, that it's designed for a certain cup size. So if you wear a bra that's a bigger cup size, you are going to have to make the bust adjustment. I'm assuming there was probably similar information in the stage brush top. We just didn't look at it because I knew I was making a true small and I wasn't making any adjustments to it. Um, so yeah, you might want to kind of consider that. And that's why I was really grateful that I had chosen to make a muslin of that top before I started because if I hadn't, it would have been too tight. It was just a little bit too tight across the chest and a little bit too tight around um, my hips. So with that information in mind, I made another wilder, but this time I did the dress. I did the same plus adjustment um, and then I lengthened the skirt. I did a, a single tier on the pattern, but I lengthened the skirt. And I loved the way it originally turned out. My only issue was that 
um, it was more oversized than I originally thought it would be. It's meant to be loose, it's meant to be flowy, it's meant to be oversized. I just didn't feel completely comfortable in the amount of ease that it had in the pattern. It made me look kind of like I was wearing a tent, which is fine, but I just didn't feel my best in it. So what I ended up doing for the dress was I did take in the sides. So I took out, you know, some of that bust adjustment that I had done in the top just to cinch in the side a little bit. Um, and did that on both sides and now it fits perfect. So I have made a total of, if you count the muslins, I've made a total of four wilders at this point, three tops and one dress. <laughs> and then I made the sagebrush. And all of those are Friday pattern companies and we carry those patterns in store. Um, we still carry the fabrics that I made all of those out of. We still all right, well, we'll move on to projects on the needles, um, which all my projects are still on the needles. I did finish up my socks, but those have been uh, gifted, so I don't have those to talk about. Um, I thought I would have, <laughs> I'm calling it the long green mile scarf. <laughs> um, and I thought I was going to do it about 72 inches, um, but I've decided it needs to be longer. And I was telling Bethany earlier that this is what I have left. It's, you know, a small little ball, but it doesn't seem to be decreasing much. <laughs> you can see it decreasing up to this point, and this, it, like, this is going to last forever. But the way I'm envisioning, you know, wearing this. I think it's on the it's uh, the before and after bias scarf from Church Mouse, but I'm looking at you know wrapping it around like that, and I would really like the ends to be long enough to maybe even you know fold them over once, and uh, since it's kind of a skinny scarf, so when I put it on, I thought no, nah. I got to that 72 inches, and I thought it needs to be a few inches longer. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and um, finish um, the yarn, saving enough, you know, to bind off, and um, and it is lace weight, so it's just going to take a little longer. I didn't, I didn't think I would, but like I said, every time I try it on, I think, well, this is really what I want it to do. So, and if somebody's smaller, of course, it's going to, you know there's going to be longer, but that's not a bad thing. Um, you know, that just gives, it'll, it'll be a good scarf, you know, under a, a coat, but it'll also be a nice, you know, decorative instead of wearing a necklace or something. And it won't hurt to have some long tails hanging down, um, you know, with that little uh, flip over. And then I'm still working on the Shane. Um, I do have it right here. I did take out some when Bethany tried it on for me. I talked about that last time and she said I should take out a few stitches for the sleeves and I did that and I've said before I think that I'm really a double point girl. Magic Loop and I do not get along very well. Um, but I, I can't find my stash of double point needles and so I didn't get the sleeves uh, done on that. But one thing I wanted to talk about, they um, just had an update to the Deshane pattern and they've increased the sizes. So there's three more sizes. Um, I measured the bust on this one. I'm making it out of uh, flax from uh, Fibra Natura and it is a DK weight. The pattern calls for uh, well, she made it out of Kestrel, which is an Aran weight yarn. Um, but I just did the largest size at the time uh, that she had in her pattern and just decided to make that size and see where it lands. Uh, so I wasn't going to fit anybody in particular. I was doing it mostly, you know, for a shop model. And uh, in the pattern, it tells you that 
it's to be worn with 16 to 22 inches of ease. So, you know, that's a lot. Well, I measured just a little while ago and it, that's gonna measure, what did I say, about 58 inches um, around. So that's gonna be, you know, a nice size and maybe not everybody wants that 16 to 22 inches of ease. Um, but one other uh, modification I did do, and we talked about this last time, uh, the size I made called for five repeats of the uh, lace panel, and I did 10. So it's going to be just a little longer than the average crop, but um, it may be cropped on me. <laughs> I think we talked about that last time. But uh, yeah, so I, I think... Um, I think it's going to be um, uh, really pretty, and I'm uh, excited with. I also, I wanted to mention that Lorian from um, the Knitting Posse did a tutorial, and if you look up on YouTube, uh, knitting sleeves two at a time, I think is the way I looked it up. Um, she posted a tutorial on how to pick up stitches and knit two sleeves at the same time. Uh, and that might get me into magic loop since I can't find my double points. Um, I might give, might give that a shot um, to see. And uh, cause I have had classes in magic loop. My daughter knits everything magic loop. Um, but you know, when I first learned to knit, it was double points, two at a time on two stirrups where it has not been invented yet. Magic loop had not been, you know, discovered yet, uh, and all that. It was double points all the way. And that's just what I'm most comfortable with. Um, but I, I might be tempted to, to branch out <laughs> and try a little more magic loop to get these sleeves done. Uh, but that's, that's what I'm working on. I still have Winstead on the uh, needles also, which is the shawl um, from Barocco Knits that I'm doing in the Millefiori Light Lux. And I've gotten a little bit more on that, not enough to, to show really. Uh, I'm, I'm right at the point. I thought I was finished with the band. And then I, when I picked it up the other day to cast on the extra stitches to you know start the next section I realized that I had one more repeat of that to do so uh so I got that done so like I said it doesn't really look much different uh than what I showed before but that's pretty much it for me well I'm still staying pretty monogamous on um projects i do have a quick i'm in the middle of a lot of my quick weekend project i started a cowl out of some noro yarn that i had in my stash that was given to me by shay from her stash <laughs> yeah, I don't bethany came for a cleanup day in my stash of fabric and yarn and uh, you know, sometimes you just have to go through that stuff and, and you know, you discover uh, things that you're wondering, who was I when I bought that? Uh, but Nora was always, you know, uh, a beautiful yarn, um, whatever, but yeah. Or you realize you've got way too much Nora and <laughs> pass along to the ones you love. <laughs> what this is, how you say that, Charedo? Potentially? I don't know. I can't. It's up at the top. Maybe so. Yeah. But anyway, it's a fingering weight. It's cashmere and gold and wool. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I love about Noro is the color changes that it does. And I'm just going to be in the middle of a row. Y'all are going to have to bear with me. I'm doing a cowl out of it. So these are the colors that it's ending up working up with. So you have these beautiful greens, the grays. I'm not too crazy about the brown here, but I mean, that's just what's in the yarn. And then I'm in the middle of a row with this really pretty purple. 
basically this cow, I believe is, I don't even remember the name, but we will put it on screen, put it in the show notes. Yeah. Red cow. You basically knit a long, not a scarf really. I mean, it's not going to be long enough to be a scarf, but then it closes with buttons. Oh, cool. So it's kind of close fitting. You know, it's not a real loose cowl, but I'm loosely following the pattern. I'm just kind of going with it. I'm probably going to try and finish up the skin because at this point it's not wrap around my neck. So we, j I just kind of keep measuring and seeing what it's got and then I'll figure out how to finish it. Yeah. I love Nora's yarns. Um, they're so good at putting their colors together. And I've had people say to me when they got to a point and said, I really don't like this color and they want to cut it out. But that's probably the color that's going to make the whole thing pop that it can, if you cut out some colors because you don't like them, it can make the rest of it, you know, when you're finished, you're wondering, well, why is it so dull? Well, it, you know, it needs all the colors they put in to it. They, they know what they're doing. <laughs> I have discovered. Knitting with this, though, makes me want to work with uh, Malia and Tangier again. Yeah. I made that crocheted scarf with one of those. I don't remember what it was, but I really want to work with that again. And I believe it's Malia has a really pretty purple. Yes. And it, it's a similar concept to the Noro uh, with those yarns and the texture in it similar to a Noro uh, yarn texture. Uh, one of them has a wool content in it. The other has no wool in it. People that have wool allergies. Um, but yeah, I kind of want to work with those again. So I may have to figure out a project to do with um, that purple. Mm -hmm. and that purple is real pretty. Get some from the store. Yeah. But the other thing that I've been working on um, is the pinguono. So I said after I finished the wave of change that I would be working on the rift and that I had an idea for the pinguono and the, the yarn I was considering for the pinguono. And I ended up casting on the pinguono, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. Um, so I have a basket full of goodies. Mm -hmm. A lot of these are test skeins that I've done or yarn that we've got at the shop that was like part of my first batch. And at one point I decided, I was like, okay, everybody's gotten what they wanted out of it. I'm going to take the rest home and do something with it. <laughs> so skeins like this, this is pink sherbet that was at the shop for a while. Mm -hmm. um, amethyst which we still have some of this on that um, cashmere base that I had dyed recently. Right. And then I have like some unnamed, this is like a really bright red, reddish with a lot of pink in it. I have this, this is my favorite skein I've ever dyed, I think, one of them, because it's really pretty tonal, pink and purple. Um, it's not really showing up as tonal on camera, but this is the first batch of this color that I did. The only skein I did of this color. And then when I went to try and recreate it, the difference. Like I couldn't recreate it. This mm -hmm. is more of a solid, whereas this has more depth to it. But I'm using both of them in the project. So if you're yelling at the screen, yell at the project. <laughs> I promise. It's coming. So I am working on, this is the right front. <laughs> Doesn't look like it, but this is the right front. 
This is the side. There's going to be a sleeve in between. Um, and then I'll go over here and I'll pick up for the left side. Look at these. These are like my favorite part. These are well, mm -hmm. look at them. They're so squishy and just, these are so much fun to knit. And um, I flew through this seed stitch panel on the back because seed stitch is like one of my favorite things to do. I like seed stitch and ribbing, which is yeah. weird. A lot Me of too. Yeah, we've talked about that. Our love for ribbing and seed stitch. And I'm not the biggest fan of curling, but for some reason when it's a rib or seed stitch, it's so much easier for me to do that kind of thing. So I flew through this and then I did these welts like, I don't know, in two days. But the thing about this sweater is that it is a bulky weight again. I, I'm just, I guess I'm in love with bulky weight sweaters at the moment. Um, but uh, Stephen West is the pattern designer, in case you didn't know. <laughs> I think that's the whole part of him, possibly, potentially. Um, <laughs> but anyway, he has designed the sweater for a bulky weight, but he loves playing with color and he encourages you to play with color and yarn in his patterns and so what he has done is he gives you tips and tricks within the pattern as well as in the description of the pattern on Ravelry about what yarns to hold together in order to get a bulky weight. So I have a ton of fingering that's what I'm using for this sweater and because of that I'm holding three strands of fingering double. Triple, not double. Um, so three strands of things make a bulky weight. And a lot of people might think it's difficult to knit with, but it really isn't um, because you, I just set them all out in front of me, just pull from it, just start knitting. Like when you start knitting on it, all of your strands are just kind of together as is. So it's really not that difficult. So I've had fun playing with color and mixing colors and you know like here this is three different colors it's pink sherbet and i think it was a hedgehog sock yarn in jelly and then that um yarn cafe creations yarn that i had so that made this you know i did more of a, i wanted more solids for these so i tried to pick colors that were similar for the welts but then like here i wanted very distinct purple and pink stripes so i held like three strands of this and three strands of pink sherbet you know this is mm -hmm. three strands of pink sherbet held together um this is kind of that funky purple that red and pink sherbet. I I have five skeins of pink sherbet. I think I need to use it the most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see how those colors kind of play with each other. Yeah. So I've been having a lot of fun. One of the great things about this sweater is that, um, you know, if you want to play with your scraps, you can. So like, when I'm deciding on what to do with my colors. For the next one, sometimes I just go with a gut instinct and be like, yeah, that, I can sort of think that works well together. Let's try that. Or what I've also done, I'm getting all of these ready. I will take the three colors I'm thinking about. I say pink sherbet in this. <laughs> I have some of mine that I dyed that's uh, typewriter keys and this heritage solid. So what I would do in this instance when I was where I would be deciding, oh, do I want these colors is I'd pick up all three strands and then I would twist them and see what that looks like. 
-hmm. And that kind of gives you an idea. Which actually does look really good together. <laughs> yeah. So these might be the shoulders. There's some little shoulder tabs right here. Or this might be a this might be a stretch. Mm -hmm. I might strike some of the front of it with this. But so I mean that's the great thing. Like I've been trying to downsize my stash because I have a lot of yarn that's just been sitting in my stash and I want to be able to knit fun and new things. And I've allowed myself to do that. Um, but I also want to use up what I have. So something like the Pinguano um, has been great for that. Because I go stash diving and then occasionally, you know, I can pick up a little something, something that I need to mix with. There's actually like, oh, this. there is another couple of these chains that I've thought of picking up for this project. Um, I don't want to say what they are in case somebody's like, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Keep that close to the chest. <laughs> you don't get to know what they are. But yeah, there's some stuff at the store that I've been thinking, oh, that would go really well with this project. But I also am trying to like, use up as much as what I, of what I have um, as I can. So that's my Panguono. It's coming along. It's just- I love it. I love your color combinations on it. You've done a really good job figuring all that out. Well, I told my mother, I was like, you know what? This is going to be my crazy sweater to go with my crazy dress <laughs> because I don't do a lot of crazy and I tend to stick with what I'm comfortable with, my neutral color palette which I love but every once in a while you need something fun right exactly and so speaking of neutral I have swatched for the rift Oh, okay. The swatch. I didn't get rogue. Um, it was supposed to, I think, be 20 rows for four inches. I got 20 rows and three inches. So I didn't get rogue age. But yeah. Well, what about the, the fabric that you've made? Do you like the way that looks? I do. And I wanted to lengthen it anyway. You wanted to what? I wanted to lengthen the shirt, like the yeah. Knit anyway, so I'm gonna go with the needle size she recommends, which is what I what I knit this swatch up. I think it's an eight, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just gonna do this kind of really lightweight, airy. Right. So I have all my yarn. Again, it's a three skein project. <laughs> I love three stain projects. This is a sport weight yarn. Um, it's Lena from Fibra Natura. It's a aluminum cotton blend that we carry at the store. And I think the size of making. Let me look. I think the size of this is. Third or the fourth size, I can't remember. I'm gonna have to look at what I wrote on Ravelry to figure that out, if I even did that. But this is what the top looks like. A really mm -hmm. basic t-shirt, basically. It's the Rift by Jacqueline Saislot and I think she has a diagram that we can show. It's not really going to give anything away. Or a schematic. So you can see. She has a, a version where you can do a long sleeve or just the short sleeve. And it is cropped, but I, like I said, I was going to lengthen it just slightly. I like cropped sweat. I like cropped sweaters like 
I'm kind of enjoying knitting them. I go to my plaster. I can wear them over dresses, which is where I've noticed I've been wearing a lot of my sweaters with anyway. Um, and of course, I have high waisted pants that go in. But that's all of my knitting works in progress. And the only other thing that I was going to talk about really quickly was um, I'm still, I'm not really on an embroidery kick necessarily. I'm not stitching a lot, but I was watching a video that was done several years back um, where Alexa Chung went to Dior's Atelier and she was interviewing the people working on the couture line that was about to be shown the next day. So they were finishing things up, doing like my work on the garments, the gowns and things like that. And a lot of it was hand embroidery and beadwork. And I loved that. And I was sitting there thinking, I'm gonna have some of those classes coming up in school that I'll be taking for my degree. And I decided that I wanted to go ahead and get some practice in and continue to practice and hone my skills because one thing I figure they will probably be looking for at school uh, in my work is consistency and even speeches. And so I just took a big thing of linen, blocked it off in sections. I decided to put some batting on the back just for stability. And I have been practicing like a back stitch, some, I think these are like daisy stitches, like running daisy stitches or something. But I'm just gonna take each block, fill it in with stitching and just practice different techniques. Um, I'm not very consistent at this point, <laughs> but I'm hoping that by the end of it, I will be. Oh, and I'm using pearl cotton. So this fabric is from the store. This is Brussels washer linen, which is what I always grab for everything I make, <laughs> pretty much. Um, it's, it's a pretty nice fabric. And then this is pearl cotton, which we have a ton of at the store, different colors. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm working on. That's everything I've worked on. I think that's everything from me. All right. Well, then I guess we're done for this podcast. I will say that I just about drank up my tea. Uh, I'm having iced tea today, and it's uh, my favorite made to brew for iced tea, Louisiane. Um, and I brewed this at home today. Um, but that's my favorite uh, of all those uh, teas at the supermarket that you get to make um, iced tea with. Louisiane is, as far as I'm concerned, the best. <laughs> that's what mom's always used. So Is it? I mean, I think that's the best. Yeah. We've had, some yeah. Other, like we've had the Lipton and things like that before, but I don't know. It's just there's something about Louisiana. It's, it's really the best. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess I'll have to get, I mean, I think I grew up with Lipton. Um, I don't know when I started using Louisiana, but, um, you know, I ought to get a box of Lipton and just see what the difference is, you know, do a side-by-side -side taste test uh, for them. And, you know, there's some others. There's uh, Tetley and there's a a tea called rose something. Um, I've forgotten um, exactly what it is. But anyway, yeah, so I should make some iced tea from each one of those and do a taste test. And, and then let us know which. See, <laughs> yeah, see what the notes are and, and that kind of thing. But anyway, I love a good glass of uh, iced tea. It's hot enough. Right. So. It is hot out. Because I thought about brewing a, a 
uh, some hot tea and I thought, you know, I'm just going to go with ice today. So. All right. Anything else? I think that's everything. All right. Well, we thank y'all for joining us and hope we see you next time. Y'all have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.